Hello everybody, Anthony here from the Hammer Game Channel, and welcome back to Kaiserreich. It has been a while. I think the last time we were playing this was when I uh, played as the Empire of Japan. Now, we are playing with a sub-mod. We are playing with um, the Disunited Kingdom, which allows um, us to play as Scotland or Wales, and they both have uh, trees. So I guess we'll be doing a playthrough of both of them. Um, right now, Scotland. Of course, I chose Scotland first. Why wouldn't I? Uh, I have went ahead and worked towards what we need to. We've simply just done the 1936 Congress of Trade Unions, the Political Com Commissars, United Britain, the Grand Protector, and the Revolution. As you can see, though, Mosley's got a uh, different portrait for when he's became the Grand Protector. He's got a hat now, a fedora, to be exact. And he's looking very stylish. But um, it's revolution time. And what you need to do is, with this, basically that's all you need to do. Do those focuses. That is all you need to do. And then you need to declare martial law. And then just fire. And just get the Maximus to assume control. And then the morning afterwards we get that. Right, so now we're just going to do some random focuses and just progress forward. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just grab the common land. So now we just need to just let things kick off. But um, let's have a wee look around the world. I'll just show off what's happening China is a mess, as usual. Anqing is currently winning. Ah, yes, the St. David's Day arsonists. Early in the morning of the first, uh, March the 1st, a group of men set ablaze a militia training school on the Lin Peninsula near Pennyberth. The men were able to escape despite attempts by the local militia to apprehend them. In the post this morning, the Daily Worker received correspondence from the dissident Welsh Republican organisation. Oh my days, I am not going to be able to pronounce this. I am not Welsh. Um, or the Wales Home Rule Army. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Res uh, claiming responsibility for the attack. They went further to state that the similar attacks would take place until Wales was giving its independence from English rule. The organisation has been in active opposition to the government in Westminster since 1925 due to a lack of industrialisation in North Wales. Very little has been done to integrate the Republican heartlands into the wider Union of Britain. Only time will tell if more attacks are to come. Well, the Federationists, uh, Federationists and Maximus have been quick to condemn the arsonists. Um, Nicholas and the Autonomists have called for a softer hand in catching the arsonists. Bloody Welsh. That is the first little event pop-up. There is many to come. Scotland will start joining in the fun. And then we'll have some independence wars. So the Union is going to uh, kind of break away very, very soon. We have a Republic declared in Serbia. So... So, Budan Janovic is now in charge of Serbia. And we have a nice civil war ongoing here. So, um, oh yes, Canada also has a, um, a new tree now. Since it's the first time we're playing this since this got changed. They have a new tree. It is much different from the last one. Quebec in Flames is completely new. Um, so basically they have to wait until they have the National Spirit Quebec and Flames, but basically this is to do with the tensions between the Anglos and the French. Uh, the Russians have also got a new tree. So they do, and um, they only have um, these three routes. However, the Soviets can still pop up, and they do have a tree themselves as well. Sadly, they have not popped up in this playthrough. This is all the expansion like focuses here. And this is it. And the Russians... Do not have a choice of joining their factions. They just make the Russian alliance. They make their own sphere of influence. And then they can seek their allies. Which, I don't know who they could possibly be. Uh, then they've got, like, all of their uh, war goals and everything. Uh, are now decisions. So, like, demanding territory. There's 43 claims in there. Or 41, rather. 41 claims. Oh, yeah. So, Mosley's uh, changed now into a complete dictator. So, yeah. He's going to be gone soon. The, the Homeland Watch attacks. It seems that the arson attacks by the WHRA has inspired their Scottish counterpart to launch a copycat arson in Scotland. Albeit much more daring. Attacking a Highland militia base in the dead of night, they were able to catch most of the men off guard, seize the contents of the armory, and make off into the night setting fire to the base in the process. While the arson attack in Wales was a bloody nose to the Federalist Federation of sorry, Authority, this has been a direct challenge and panic is spreading now that the fringe obscure Homeland Watch organisation has managed to gain arms likely to be used in the future terrorist attacks. And if, as the Federation of leaders call for calm, many wonder if they can truly protect the people in the revolution. Hunt those bastards down. Hopefully they fail at hunting them down. 
I don't exactly know what's going to happen to Mosley. I don't know if he gets killed, assassinated. I don't know what happens to him. Oh, Tibet is being attacked now. Nothing new, really. China's just MS. Just like they always are now. And Philippe Tan is sticking around. Good for him. The American Civil War should be closest to kicking off. Why... Why are you aiding them, MacArthur? I'm not going to have your aid for much longer. I don't really know how much you're really offering them anyways right now. Seems a bit of an odd one. I guess it doesn't really matter for research because we'll be... I don't know what's going to happen for to that once we change to Scotland. I don't know what we're going to have researched. I've basically just been building industry in Scotland the whole time. Not, not cheating at all, just making sure that we're ready for this conflict. And there's the American Civil War. So what you'll notice next is, this army here, this is going to rapidly decrease in size. It is going to just collapse. It is going to collapse. Oh, I've just noticed that um, we have Wallonia and we have Flanders here. Flanders is now a Dutch puppet and the Dutch are in the Reichspact. Wallonia, however, are free. Um, I guess we could do Britain in the thingy, but I'm just going to do a new, a new Lee Enfield. Panama has joined the Entente and it actually looks like the Kingdom of Romania is possibly going to win this civil war. They do have volunteers from a host of nations. They will be losing those volunteers. Um, the Second International Congress, we don't care for that, really. So they've got... How have they got Russian? Oh, yes, they've got... As I said, Russia's not in a civil war. So they've got Russian, Japanese, Ukraine, and German. Definitely all better than uh, these guys. Oh, it's um, now Milan Stodge... Janovich, I probably said that wrong, but he's now in charge of Serbia. That other leader was not here for very long at all. That's about ahead of time. We'll do computer machine. Again, research doesn't really matter all too much. Democracy has prevailed in the Philippines. Eh, I don't know how much... It shouldn't be too much longer until we get the next event, I'm hoping. Yeah, our army should... A good sign of the next event to come is uh, our army just disappearing. Oh, raids in the opposition offices. As expected, troops loyal to the Maximus cause raided several offices around London that harboured members of opposition parties. Several high-ranking autonomous and congregationalists have been captured and taken into custody for questioning, with rumours swirling that some prominent federalist, uh, federationists have been executed already. Upon raiding the Welsh office, however, it was found that Nicholas had fled with important party documents. It is rumoured that there may be informants within the Maximus government who gave uh, Nicholas warning of the raid and he himself has tipped off fellow syndicalists in Cardiff and Edinburgh. Roads leaving London have been closed by Nicholas. Oh, but Nicholas is yet to be found. I want his head on my desk. Gosh, this dictator thing is not going very well for Mosley. Not going very well at all. We are... Well, he is not in a good position. Don't really know how many factories are built up here. But let's see if we can have a look. So we've got one of each in uh, Aberdeenshire. Don't care about the Spartacate. Uh, we have one of each in the Scottish Highlands. We have one military and two civvies in Lanark. And in Lothian, we have two uh, military and four civilian. And I've also decided to build a new Hadrian's Wall. We have level three land forts across the border. Why not? Just in case we do need to defend against the uh, the British. Well, I guess the English. That's surely what they'll become. Something's not right. The Spectre Media Blackout attempts to suppress any and all information leaving London. It seems news of what has taken place has spread like wildfire, with militias across the country dissolving and disappearing into the night. Prominent totalists in Scotland are being assassinated and all word from Wales has been completely cut off. Whispers of a coup and counter-revolutions are spreading and many wonder if Mosley's position as chairman is in crisis. Well... Yeah, there we go. The army has now just disintegrated. We only have eight divisions. I'll go ahead and put these guys back in charge of those. And I'll just do that as well, because I always do it. I'm not going to support the CSA. I'm not going to do that. So we're interested to see what happens. Ah, the army mutinies. I'm just going to quickly um, just tell them to go there. Uh, with the situation rapidly unfolding, elements of the British army have mutinied. 
en masse, dissolving themselves, leaving only a few lo loyalist regiments. While the Maximus tried to make out this was in fact a well-planned purge of the armed forces and they intend to rebuild from scratch, many in the inner circle are watching the coming days with fear. All communications to Wales have been cut off and allegations that loyal military units there are being murdered in the night by the WHRA remain unsubstantiated. In Scotland, the news is much more bleak, and it seems the Homeland Watch have assumed full control of the nation from within the shadows, with Maximus sympathisers being gunned down in the streets. Joe McCormick has uh, came forward as its leader and called on all Scots to resist mostly a night tyranny. <laughs> While a death warrant has been issued for McCormick, there is one to enforce. No, no one to enforce it, uh, and our loyalist military elements struggled across the border to Scotland. Is this the end of Maximism? Internal collapse, which grants daily political power gain minus 0.2%. No, minus 0.2 rather. Division organization minus 50%. Division recovery rate minus 60. Stability minus 40. Division attack minus 70. Division attempt minus 60. Um, AI modifier call ally desire minus 1000 and join desires minus 1000 for them. About 180 days. David Sterling and George Sterling Aitken stop being generals. Got four more divisions, but that still probably is not going to be enough, and I'm sending them all self anyways, just to make my life easier to begin with. Um, North good or bad in Spartacade. Scotland breaks off the inauguration of the Second International Congress. Seems that the inevitable has come to bear, and John McCormick has officially signed off a unilateral declaration of independence to much fanfare. Though this is more of a formality with the homeland, watch more or less controlling the nation. A state of open warfare exists between the Scottish Republic and the Union of Britain, where our enemies are flocking to recognise the nation. There are rumours that McCormick's authority is contested by a missing Willie Gallagher and an alternative socialist government. While lacking support, if it manages to oust McCormick, it could appeal to France. Regardless, we'll have to wipe out this government now before it can cause too much damage. Scotland forever! Britain can never be divided. I guess this, I choose Scotland forever here. The rebellion begins, country changes to Scotland... Um, the Union loses cores, and I get all of them. Oh, glorious. We are now Scotland. The Homeland Watch, where John McCormick is here. Let's have a look at the tree. A father to the nation. The Homeland Watch has consolidated power, and then we get the promote Scottish business or military build-up, restore democracy, or permanent stability. First elections. A free Caledonia. Under the rightful king. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, we, we can get King Edward to just sit on the throne in Scotland. A Jacobite king sits on the throne. Democracy advised the Homeland Watch has taken power and his service are for the workers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll come king of the United Kingdom when a provisional British government will be established. An independent kingdom of Scotland. Oh my gosh, it's interesting. Scotland unshackled. Purged the Democrats. Deal with the devil. Our old masters. Petition in Canada. Consolidate the internal alliances. Appeal to Germany. Scottish National Army. Scotland the Brave. Perfect. The Spirit of the Bruce. Oh, this is looking good. Scotland rules the waves. Scots in the skies. Oh, this is looking good. A Windsor on the throne. The homecoming. Brothers once more, the coronation. Jacobite king. Oh, gosh. McLean's legacy lives. This is so interesting. Anyways, we need to defeat the English now. We only have one military factory. Oh, we don't actually have any divisions either. That's, that's kind of disappointing. We still have our land forts, though. And the infrastructure. So I guess we'll go ahead and build that up. We only have one dockyard as well. Oh gosh, well I guess we'll just build convoys then. Research. Oh gosh, we need to start from scratch by the looks of things. Okay, that is fine. Uh, the rebellion begins. The English have pushed us to the brink with their uh, totalitarian, totalitarian laws. This time to rise up like our ancestors and cast off the Anglo yoke once and for all. Okay. Oh, damn, we declare war on them. Conscription crisis in uh, Quebec. Oh, well, it's not good for them. 
Right, the rebellion has begun. Scotland unshackled. That takes seven days. We have seven divisions. Who do we have? David Sterling's here. Not George Sterling Aitken. Oh, well. Let's get uh, Bernard Ferguson in charge of our, uh, well, be our field marshal. And Alan Gordon Cunningham. And let's get going. And here's Wales as well. Wales is now here. Oh, it's Nicholas that's in charge of Wales. So we look at the Welsh tree. The Welsh United Front. Begin negotiations. All right, that's when the rebellion's over. Long live the Republic. Peaceful coexistence. We'll be neutral on the world stage. Hmm. What was this? Look towards our Celtic brothers. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Root out the traitors. Oh, we can't. He can't change the coup. Succeeds. Oh, ho, ho. a true Welsh king. The devil, you know, becomes a puppet. Oh, well, that's completely out the window. But yeah, this is this is this is a very good-looking mod. Right. Anyways, let's get pushing. How many divisions you got? Four to eighteen. Right. So we've not really got that many divisions right now. Oh, but there's the Welsh Union coming. So uh, happy days. We have got ourselves a nice war. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to take any of the Union of Britain or if we're just going to peace out. Because um, it would be nice to take some other land. Cavalry. Let's get the Newcastle and down to Hull, please. Just try and secure Liverpool as well. The invasion of Britain begins. The invasion of the mainland Britain has begun and it's time to reclaim the birthright. All good Scottish men take up arms and fight to reclaim what is rightfully ours. For king and country, get some fantastic modifiers right there. We do have that for probably what will be the entire time. Oh, it's Scotland Rising. Okay, that's good. Political issues. Right, that that's fine. Incoming refugees as well. Oh, and we got ourselves in our dockyard. How many guns do we get? Right, we've got 7,000 guns. I'm hoping what we can do is we can, like, maybe come in behind some of their divisions and circle them. Scotland unshackled. Speaking to an electrified crowd in the centre of Edinburgh, below Edinburgh Castle, Joe McCormick has given a grand speech titled Scotland Unshackled, which he has denounced Mosley and his maximist allies in bringing about the ruin of the nation and calling on Scotland to fight for its freedom and very existence. Scores of young men have volunteered to join the Homeland Watch and the Provisional Scottish Army to fight for their home and country while the syndicalist government has rallied syndicalist militia to the cause. We're technically at odds, the two groups have yet to go into open fighting and some wonder if the coalition is possible. Right, so... Secure the home front. Oh. Purge the Democrats. Arm the refugees. I don't want that. This is the wrong way. We're going to focus on the exterior threat. The deal with the devil. How many divisions you got now? Still 7 to 18. How many do you have? 2 to 6. Right, Wales really ain't going to do all that much. Do they have any more refugee crisis? Yeah, internal collapse is really hurting them, so they're not going to be that effective against me, really. Just want to engage them. We'll see if we can come across. We've got another division coming down here. Yeah, we got them. Move on to Liverpool. You continue on. These guys have got this done and sorted. Yeah, we'll sign a non-aggression pact with the Welsh for the time being. Why not? We're both fighting for our independence. Deal with the devil. Representatives of the Homeland Watch, the main democratic parties, and the syndicalist government have all met to discuss a truce. After hours of heated negotiations, multiple threats of collapse from both sides, eventually an agreement was made. While not a united front is seen in Wales, for now at least the two sides will stop killing each other and focus on the British. To be quite honest, it's really just the English we're fighting, because uh, they don't have <laughs> any of the other land in the Union. So we can call for international volunteers, because there's 10,000 manpower and there are 6,000 rifles. Which is not too shabby. Yeah, what we do need is these guys to hurry up and finish mopping up there. Oh, 
Actually, you stop and engage him. I thought he was retreating, actually, but oh well. See if we can actually encircle this divi these divisions here. Fantastic. Right, cavalry through here. Actually, you just get yourself sorted yourselves. Right, it's called for international volunteers. Carlos Spain has risen up, so we've got the Spanish Civil War now. Oh, petitioning in Germany. I kind of do want to have the rightful king. I, I'm really tempted by the rightful king. And Windsor on the throat, I just... Brothers, once more, the coronation. The Union of Crowns has been established. Thriving Scottish culture. Elections for king and country. Invasion of Britain. At peace with the Union of Britain. The what? The Covenators have consolidated power. Jacobite king as well, though. Legitimacy. Crush the Unionists. Reconcile with the Unionists. Oh, uh, I think I'm going to go for the Windsor and the Throne. So let's go ahead. Our old masters. The British are old masters. They are the ones that can best help us in our time of need. We don't need the support from the damn Germans or Canadians. All we need is every Scot to have a fighting spirit and we can ensure that. So this will be the way to keep McCormick around. This is the way to get the Germans. And this is the way to get the, the, uh, the Windsors. I am definitely going for the Wind Windsors. I, d I just love to have <laughs> King Edward on the uh, the Scottish throne. Yeah, we'll see if we can get this cavalry to come in behind here, because then we can help the Welsh out. The Austrians have declared war on the, uh, the Hungarians. And Romania has... The Kingdom of Romania has uh, won, so they'll be sticking around. We could probably get some more divisions up, but I don't really think it's necessary. Foundation of the Belgrade Pact. And we have peaced out. It is a shame we have peaced out, like, we, we could have defeated them. What? Oh, no. Did we do it too quickly? What? Oh, no, we've done it too quick. Okay, here we go. We've done petitioning the Canada this time. So, John McCormick has decided the best option for the foreign benefactor would be in Canada, the home of the British exiles. It's going to prove to be a good strategic choice for them. In exchange, we'll be able to secure our independence from Britain. Of course, what, we should, what should we ask for? Just aid and equipment. Send some vo uh, some volunteers too. An expeditionary force. Let's ask for an expeditionary force and see what they say. Not that we're really needing them. I'm not going to try and push too much further forward because I want to see what the Canadian response is going to be. Scotland has joined the Entente. <laughs> okay. Um, a free Caledonia. And there we go, we've done that. There we go. Right, so that's sorted. So let's head on back home. <laughs> we can return Canadian lands. Um, no. The Welsh have also finished their war. Good. Yeah. A delegation from the Canadian government arrived today to formally invite Scotland to join the IEDC, the Imperial Economic Development Council. The IEDC was created to foster greater economic cooperation within the Entente, with yearly and voluntarily contributions of political power, which are invested back in member nations at the discretion of the Dominion of Canada. There are those in the government who express concern whether Scotland would actually see a return for its investments, seeing as the Dominion of Canada would s could simply decide to invest everything in itself. But considering donations are voluntary, it seems like we would ensure a short life for the IEDC. Yeah, join and invest 25 political power. They can do as they please with that. Might as well go ahead and actually do that. The IEDC advisors. Our contribution to the IEDC allows us to take advantage of their pool of advisors, the benefit from which is greater depending on how much we contribute to the group. How shall we use them over the next year? Um, I feel like construction speed is probably the best thing for us right now. Um, so yeah, we've got the engineers. Oh, 
Okay, with Scotland now fully independent and a member of the Entente, the Canadian ambassador has requested a meeting with the provisional president, John McCormick. In the meeting, the Canadian delegation outlined a quest for a full restoration of King Edward to the throne and with Scotland being incorporated in the provisional British government. However, some members of the delegation indicated they would agree to the restoration of the Union of Crowns at least until Britain itself is fully conquered. The entire delegation has agreed that they are prepared to grant home rule once Britain is taken. To agree to such a proposal would inevitably disgrace the government, but at the same time it's clear that the Canadians will not take no for an answer. Just be gentle, lads. Oh, we're now the provisional British government. Okay. What is it? Then that opens up the rightful king. Hmm. Well, we're still Scotland. We are still Scotland. Gosh, I had to do the whole thing again, but we're back to this event. So, yeah, we're gonna. We kicked you lot out here once. Can't accuse the government. What do you, as expected, the Canadian troops garrison in Scotland have cooed us. Arresting McCormick and dissolving the government with the aid of much of the Conservative Unionist Party. With Scotland now under British control, must decide whether to establish British uh, provisional government or Scottish state under King Edward and the Unionists. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to reward the Unionists. And we're going to stay as the Kingdom of Scotland. And we've got Tam Galbraith in charge. There we go. That's what I wanted. That is much better. And Free Caledonia is finished. So do we still get we Yes, the Union of the Crowns. That is better. That is what I want. Union of the Crowns seems so much better. Cause then, yep. The Crowns of Union's been established, then we'll go down here. And license for King the invasion of Britain. But yes, also we do get decisions, and I have to say I like some of these, especially uh, we could restore the Act of Union, which we cannot actually read the rest, but we will become the Kingdom of Scotland, England, which could be fun. Uh, we can also recreate the uh, United Kingdom, or we can even become the Celtic Union, which all just sound fantastic. Well, two of them sound fantastic. The UK one seems a little bit boring, but are they demilitarized right now? Ah, oh, that's interesting. And they are now just the Union of England with T.E. Lawrence in charge. So yes, things are going to get interesting. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I shall be back very soon for another episode. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Then now.